Okay. Okay, we go Rivka. Rivka Ram. Here. Connor. Connor, Luma, Seba, Donna. And this is Shapiro. Here. And uh, your name is? Yes. Kaya Atkin. Kaya Atkin, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, the, uh, on Thursdays, on Thursdays we will be learning Milcha Shabbos, and the class is about the 39 categories of what is considered Malach on Shabbos. So we're going to have our introduction. What did the Torah tell us about Shabbos? Now, what does Shabbos mean to each of you? We'll go around the class. Tell me what Shabbos means for you. Okay, very good. So this is Shabbos Menucha, Shabbos of rest, no distractions, being able to focus on your life. Okay, that's what Chaya tells us. What does Shabbos mean to you? It's a day that I'm not stressed. I'm just, I don't, I know that I don't really need to be married to make a show, but like, I'm free from sort of responsibility and I try to know how to connect that Shabbos. Do you look forward to Shabbos? Yeah. Okay. I love the food. Okay. Yeah. Tanner, yes. Um, Shabbos. Shabbos is just great. I love Shabbos. Yeah. Um, I feel like I have more. I feel like I have more uh, like energy to like internalize the things that I'm hearing. Like whatever. We, like I love learning Pirkei Avos. Like last um, Shabbos, we were up in Penn State. It was just so transformative. I feel like it really opens up for a lot of connection and rest, but. Also, I learned this summer that Shabbos isn't only about rest, it is working when you are working, but it's a different kind of work. It's not, it doesn't mean sleeping the entire day, it means like getting up and doing spiritual work, spiritual connection, um, and your Neshama loves it. <laughs> Wonderful that you feel that way. <laughs> okay. um, well, when I was in college, I thought, like, I was like, oh, great, like, guilt free break from homework. And that was so amazing and wonderful. But like now that I don't have homework, I like I mean it's not so shallow my relationship with Shabbos, but like, I, I think I am need to figure out what it means to be stuff. I don't know yet. Okay. 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 I mean Shabbos is my favorite thing to be Asian for it, but I like really stressed out about what happened because Shabbos I know that I get to just focus on where I guess like reflect on like my life the past week, where I want to be the next week, and I'm going to see my relationship with the shop, hanging out with my friends, and my stress and success. So that's cool. That's wonderful. Okay. Shall we see you? Shabbos is like a connection with the condition, but also with the others, so it's not just one by the place. Okay. Shabbos. Um, this is nice. This, I, I feel like it's just, um, I, I close my phone and have no guilt about like, what if people at 2 a.m. are calling me for an emergency like has happened in the past. I'm not going to mm-hmm. um, Or like 5 a.m. are calling me for an emergency and I won't be able to pick up. So 
in a sense, I guess I could rest easier and actually sleep on Shabbos um, better. Um, and also, it's like it's like nice that it, you're not you're not worrying about people that are calling you for emergencies. You're you're not worrying about um, I'm gonna get an email from this and this. And not I'm gonna uh, uh, my my uh, my boss is gonna be contacting. Well, I don't know if they're not working, but I'm saying like, um, like different people are going to be trying to contact me, and I won't be able to reach them, and then, and then, and then, and then also it's it's like I'm like it, not forced, but but optionally forced to put away my technology, which takes away my second option because a lot of times I sometimes don't want to read a book, but then I'll be like. I want to read what's on the internet too. And then I have like a second option. And then I'm like, but my phone's in my hand, you know. And then, and then I just end up, and then I don't end up opening the book. But on Shabbos, I don't have that second option. So it's. Shabbos means you change. You, you stop. So wonderful. I, I heard a very nice um, thought from one of the uh, one of my classes, I think it was two years ago. He said that uh, when it comes to Shabbos, I feel like a princess. I thought that was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> That's what someone told me in class. So I feel like a princess. I get dressed up and I feel royalty. So that was really what it is. It's royalty. It's, it's beautiful. It's it ruffles in the shirt. So it's, uh, it's, 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 not, it's not it for it's two years ago. Yeah. Two years ago. So I'll now, um, <clears throat> so we do have all of this is a gift of Hashem. Shabbos is our gift. And who are the ones who usher in the Shabbos? How does the Shabbos start? The women bring in the Shabbos by lighting the candles. And the candles that we light, so it says, <laughs> If you observe the lights of Shabbos, I will show you the lights of Tzion, of the Beis HaMikdash. Which means that the Shabbos lights that we light have in them the ingredients of the lights of the Beis HaMikdash of the Menorah. So we have an opportunity every Friday to light those lights, which are physical lights that illuminate the house physically. And that is Onik Shabbos. It brings in an enjoyment of Shabbos, eating by candlelight, and also covered Shabbos and the honor of Shabbos. So the women are the ones who bring in the Shabbos, and then we get an additional level of, of the holiness during the Shabbos. And this is called an Neshama Yaseira, an additional godly soul, which has also a, 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 a subconscious effect on us that we become uplifted and more attuned to spirituality. Depending on what you've done throughout the week, you should talk the Arab Shabbos, whoever toils throughout the week for Shabbos, Urkel be Shabbos, that is what we get to eat on Shabbos physically and also spiritually. So the more you are working on yourself throughout the week, then we have that benefit on Shabbos that it become, comes to light. That's why I sleep twice. I, after I open my eyes, I kind of like to sleep in so, that's, so the Shabbos comes in. When you make the extra soul, is it like another level of our soul or is it a separate extra soul? It's, a, it's an additional level that we don't have throughout the week. How exactly okay. how it works? Uh, like, so, so it's an additional level, yes. So there are different opinions of what that sense. actually, it's, uh, it's a different opinions of what it is. Is it only that throughout the week we have the three levels of the soul, Nefesh, Ruch, and Shaman, and then on Shabbos we also have the additional illumination of Chai Yechida, that is according to one explanation in Kabbalah. And if Shabbos is over, then that level departs. Then we also have, the Shabbos comes in in stages, 
And uh, before our meal, what do we say? Kiddush. Before Kiddush, Shalom Aleichem. Shalom Aleichem is greeting angels, which means the angels have come with us, to us, for the, for the, for the Shabbos, and they are, are helping us to be able to experience the Shabbos. That's when we show them Aleichem, we greet them. These are Shabbos angels throughout the week. We have other um, uh, 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 angels that are with us. The Shabbos day, we have the special level of Kedusha. They're the ones who usher it in. And um, the Gemara, the Talmud tells us that uh, when we start the evening of Shabbos, there are two angels, one of them positive, one of them negative. And according to the condition of the house, how it is in tune to Shabbos, so that is what the proclamation is made by the angel that's appropriate. So uh, if it is in the honor of Shabbos, everything is set up for Shabbos, the angel says, may next week be the same. We have that tranquility, the peace of mind, the serenity, the holiness, and the other angel answers, Amen. If, however, it is not in such a state, so the other angel says, may next week be the same, and the angel of blessing has to answer, Amen. So the Gemara tells a story of Rabbi Meir. You've heard of Rabbi Meir Balanes. Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Meir is traveling, and he comes to a home, and he asks if he could, if they could host him for Shabbos, and they say yes. And then he sees Friday is a turmoil. The couple, I guess, they don't, uh, they have an interaction that's nothing, nothing, nothing to, nothing to, to, to be proud about. And it's really like, you know, fireworks, all the stress and everything else, getting ready for Shabbos, no matter how, how many hours you have for Shabbos, whether it is uh, in, in the winter time, you're always stressed out the last minute before. If you have a family, you understand what that means. We're at four minutes before minutes before the Shabbos is coming, and then if the, if the Shabbos is in the in the summer, you're still stressed out right before Shabbos, even though you've had another additional four hours. But Rabbi Meir was only planning to stay there for one Shabbos. He decides that this family needs a little help, so he remains for additional weeks until he sees that he has been successful in bringing peace and harmony to the home. And the Gemara concludes that when the male leaves this home right, to, to pursue their his journey, he hears a, a voice that says, you have taken away all my work, and that was the Yetzer Hara. Mm -hmm. He's working extra, extra hard on Friday that the Shabbos should be a disturbed Shabbos. So this is something a person has to be aware of, that you have to put extra effort that the Shabbos should enter in peace. So we have now that we have so we have different stages in Shabbos as it goes. There's the Shabbos of Friday night. There's the Kiddush. Then there is the Shabbos day, going to a higher level. Then we come to Shabbos afternoon for Mincha, and um, this is the highest level Mincha time. This is also that we say in Yerkata Mazon. I opened it to the right page. So. Um, so we say, in, in the Birkat Amazon, in our grace after meal, when, we, uh, when we've had Amotzi, we've had the Chala, Rachman Yan Chileinu, may the merciful let us inherit, Yan Shekulu Shabbos and Nucha, a day which will be Shabbos and rest, the Chaya Ilamim for life everlasting, which is the coming of Moshiach. So in Shabbos, it has Me'en Olam Haba, it has ingredients that also are connected to the coming of Moshiach with Olam Haba. So this is every Shabbos we have that experience, and it goes from, from level to level. So the Shabbos has so many positive, positive aspects to it, and we're going to be doing the Malachas, that, that which we cannot do or could do on Shabbos that will not destroy the spirit of Shabbos. So Shabbos, we are Hashem's guest. Shabbos, we are uh, Hashem li lifts us up to His level. So this, so therefore, when one is in the presence of the King, 
there's a certain conduct how one conducts themselves and not let them be distracted from spending time with the king. So the analogy would be, there was someone who was working for the king and doing wonderful work. He's maintaining the king's palace, doing everything that needs to be fixed. Then there is when the king calls the worker and he's communicating with him, he's inviting him to his table, he's inviting him to, to spend time with the king. Now, person sees there's a crack in the wall. The king is talking to him. What would it be like the king, he tells the king, excuse me, excuse me. He runs and takes his tools and starts fixing the crack in the wall. He's doing a good thing, he's fixing the crack in the wall. But at the same time, the king was just talking to you. You're sitting at his table, you're having a meal with him. You're disrespecting the king. So even though we have the, with the uh, each of the Lamates Malachas is another way of refining the world. Six days a week, you should do work because each of the uh, activities that we do of the Lamates Malachas is refining the world, making the world a better place. Whether it is borer, borer means selecting, separating good from bad. That is something that is a, is a, is a wonderful thing, but it is appropriate. When you're doing it at a time, when you're spending time with the king and he took away all the negative things, there's only goodness, and what are you doing now? You're taking away your time from the king and you're now doing something that is disrespectful, even though throughout the week it is something that is commendable and something that is wonderful and that is what is good. So therefore, when we speak about Lama Tesma Lachas, not to do it, it, is because it is distracting our connection with the king at the time that the king is communicating with us. And therefore, when we do say that Hashem is at our Shabbos meal, the godliness is there on the level, of, 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 on that level, and the meal is being, uh, is Hashem's meal. So therefore, this has a special halacha as well. It says that a person who spends for Shabbos, with having Shabbos in mind, it comes from a separate budget. Shem gives you the budget on Rosh Hashanah, gives us the budget for the entire year. Then there is another account. There is another account that is for spending for Shabbos, Yantif Rosh Chodesh as well, and then also for education, Jewish education. That comes from a different account. Shem says, whatever you're going to spend for Shabbos, Yantif, Rosh Chodesh, in the honor of Shabbos, whether it is the special foods, whether it is clothes, whether it is uh, the flowers that you buy to, to enhance the table, the, uh, the, 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 the cutlery, anything else that you buy for Shabbos, that is on Hashem's account. And Hashem says that he will, throughout the year, take care of the, that which you spent extra, he will take that, make that, make that, uh, your spendings will be reimbursed. So you're taking it out on Hashem's account, he's going to reimburse you everything that you spent for the Shabbos, Yom Tev, and for your Jewish education. So, love our live, I need a shaling, I could take out also uh, monies, and I will, I will pay. So this is where Shabbos is, and uh, so even though we're going to be focusing on the that which cannot be done on Shabbos, but I just want to make the introduction that Shabbos, the reason why we don't do all, all the malachas is because of the specialty of Shabbos, what we should be spending time with. So let's open up our booklets, and we're going to see Shabbos in the Torah. So this is, I guess it should be, Okay, it's the first page, it says seven on top. This is where we start off with Kiddush. Noam HaShishi, it ends with the sentence of Bayara the King of the Torah, also the King of the Torah, Hashem saw all that he had done, and behold, it was very good. It was evening and it was morning. Yom HaShishi, it was the sixth day. And from there we continue by heaven and earth and all the components with us completed. So there's an interesting, why do we start with Yom HaShishi for Kiddush? 
we really we should start by Yacholu. The, we're speaking about the conclusion. Heaven and earth and all their components were thus completed. Why do we start off with Yom HaShishi? If you look at the initials of each of these words, Yom starts off with a Yud. HaShishi starts off with a Hey. Vayachulu is a Bar. And Hashemayu is a Hey, Hashem's name. So we are ushering in in our Kiddush, Yud Kei Bav Kei, Hashem's name, which is the name of Hashem as he is higher than creation, the infinite name, where Hashem is infinity. We have a Lakim where Hashem enclosed himself in nature. And nature is godliness that is repeated each time it's repeated again and again and again and again and again and again. We take it for granted that's what nature is, mother nature, but it's Hashem doing things on a constant basis. And then we have Hashem who is past, present, and future, all in one, where it's above time and place. And this level is what we usher in for Kish. So we are testifying. That is why it says when you say the Kiddush, you should stand when you're saying this part of Kiddush because we're testifying that Hashem is the creator of the world. So really each week we make a proclamation, Hashem is the creator. And with that, we bring in the Shabbos. So here we have Shabbos. By Hashem blessed the seventh day by Kaddish Aisei, and he made it holy. <coughs> so the day itself is a holy day, and it begins from creation. The first Shabbos was already a day of holiness, a day of upliftedness, a day where Hashem has projected his holiness. Now the question is, who is able to absorb this holiness, who is able to sense this holiness, this is something that the world did not have that merit. So, Hashem sees from all the work that had been creating, so it would continue to function. Now we have the next page, which reads off its page, it's taken from Yisro, the next page, page um, on top it reads 353. We have at the bottom of the page, we have, this is the Ten Commandments. And we have the Fourth Commandment. Who would like to read for us? 353, who would like to read for us? Uh, it's the second page. It's, a, 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 it's under, under, underlined, uh, the, your, remember the Shabbos day, to keep it holy. It's the Ten Commandments, yes? Okay, so. Would like to read? So, is someone, is someone reading it? Okay, loud. Okay. Yeah. No, you can read it in English. No, you can read it in English. In English. In English. Yeah. Yeah. Continue, you have to the end. So here we have the Shabbos that is being given as part of the Ten Commandments, one of the commandments that uh, the Torah tells us that this is a day to keep holy. That's the positive. So this, Zechor Shem HaShabbos Lekatshoi, this is, includes the making of Kiddush. How do we remember the Shabbos day to keep it holy? We bring it in by making Kiddush. So making Kiddush is a biblical mitzvah. Whether it is doing, uh, declaring it during our davening or whether it is saying the Kiddush over a cup of beverage, of wine, 
So this becomes the a mitzvah of the Chorosh Yom HaShabbos Lekatsu. Remember the Shabbos day to keep it holy. We have the, um, on the, on the beginning, we have on the, um, like on the bottom of the page, on the page 353, we have underlined, this is um, by tradition, what is, what is considered work? So nowhere in the Torah, does the Torah tell us the definition of the word malacha. However, we do have Teirah Shabal we have the oral transmission by Moshe Rabbeinu, when Hashem told Moshe Rabbeinu, you're not allowed to do any work on Shabbos, he also told him, what does work mean? And that, the Torah will tell us some of the activities that are forbidden where it's specifically in the Torah. The Torah tells us about cooking and other food preparation. The Torah tells us not to light a fire, that's work. The Torah tells us all the agricultural activities are work. So this is specifically in the Torah. There are those that the Torah specifically tells us what we are not permitted to do. And so this is a part of Torah Shebal Pen. So the Torah was given in its written form. It was also given in such a manner that the only way you could learn the written Torah would be by having the oral law transmitted. So until the Mishnah, it was all done orally from generation to generation. So, because of that, what is it, how do we get that information if it's nothing is in writing? Speech. Hmm? Speech. I know, so how, do you, how, does, how did anyone, in generations from the time of Baisha Rabbeinu, have the information, what could be done, what can't be done, what the translation of the Torah, what does it mean in the Torah? What does it mean, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth? What does that mean? Does it mean if someone uh, damaged someone taking out their eyes, does that mean that the Bezdin, that the courts take out that person's eye? It says in the Torah, an eye for an eye. So the so Moshe Rabbeinu taught us an eye for an eye means really you should deserve that, but you're going to have to pay monetary damages for what you call that person. So even though it says we, we cannot take it literally unless we have the Torah tradition that comes with it, that this is Moshe Rabbeinu gave it over. So how was the Torah transmitted until the time of the Mishnah? How was it transmitted from generation to generation? Oral Torah? No, the written Torah was, 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 was transcribed. You had it on a scroll. The, to, the written Torah was, this, was, was on a scroll. You had the scroll, you read the Torah, now you had to have a, 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 have to have a teacher. teacher. That's the only way. So, uh, And there's also, there is a criteria of whom you, could sh you should choose as a teacher. A teacher has to be one who believes in what he's teaching. A teacher has to be one who practices what he's teaching. And it, a teacher has to be one whose, whose conduct is exemplary, a person who is, who, is a, who is a model and knowledgeable, that you should be able to emulate this teacher and be able to follow not only what he's teaching you, but also to observe how he conducts himself and to be able to learn from him as well. So Hashem wanted to have the leaders of Claudius Soil, the teachers of Claudius Soil, and that's why you had the Shevet Levi was designated to be the teachers. You had it from Shimon, you had it, those, those were the teachers of the, of the small children. You had people who were given special, special talents that they were able to transmit the Torah in a way that the one who is the recipient should be able to get the full strength of what Hashem is wanting, the message Hashem wants to do. And therefore, when we have the word halacha, what does halacha mean? Halacha is laws. Well, what is the translation of the word halacha? What is the root word of halacha? Holech means to, yeah, to go. How should you go about your life? Where Hashem oh, the, wants you to. Halacha is the way, the way, the way of, to, to, to Hashem's ways. Like, Lead us in the, in, the, in the road that Hashem wants us to go. So this is our, that's our, that's our roadmap. Or now we have our GPS. And to, I 
Okay. Halacha, the word holech is the root word. Wait, Rabbi, I'm sorry. Rabbi Barnes. Mm -hmm. um, okay, That's a permanent marker. What was the permanent? Uh oh. Trust <laughs> me. It's okay. 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 That immediately the Torah was given in such a way that you have to have the oral law with it because it says, like Sasa Kamalak did not do any work. Well, what is the definition of work? No, the, the, the Torah only gives us a few of the of, of what is considered work, like you're not doing Shabbos cooking, like the fire, uh, the, um, the agricultural work, but there are so many others that are included where the Torah does not tell us about writing, it does tell, tell us about sewing, of building, all of these. The Torah doesn't tell us, but it is a part of the Lamb Testament of us. So now we have in the next page um, the Sabbath. Shem tells Moshe, you must keep my Shabbos. It's a sign between you, me, and you for all generations to make you realize that I, God, am making you holy. So here we have the Torah tells us that the purpose of Shabbos is to make a person holy, make a person elevated. Make a person connected to Hashem, bring up godliness in the person. And therefore, keep my Shabbos as, as something sacred to you. And therefore, anyone doing work on the Shabbos should be cut off spiritually from his person, from the people. And anyone violating it should be put to death. Do your work six days, but keep the Saturday as a Shabbos of Shabbos only to Hashem. Whoever does any work on Shabbos should be put to death. The Israelites shall thus keep the Shabbos, making it a day of rest for all generations as an eternal covenant. So this is a, a covenant between Hashem and the sign between me and the Israelites. That during the six weekdays, God made heaven and earth, but on Saturday, he ceased working and withdrew to the spiritual. So, so this is where the Shabbos is given as a covenant between Hashem and Paul Israel. This is the holiness that Shabbos is that we are able to receive. Guys, for all you scared, there's a lot of rules about this before you could have to consider the application. You have to actually know the laws. So, so uh, yeah. to, to have, to be liable, person has to be warned that this is a malacha, not to say which malacha it is. And if he waits, he pauses before he does the malacha, he's not liable for it. It's only if he does it while he's being warned within three seconds. The time it takes to say Shalom Alecha Rabbi, only if he does it during that time, so then we know that he actually is going against this prohibition. If he waits a little longer, then he has to be warned again. So it's only if he does it immediately after he was being warned, within three seconds, four seconds, only then it's liable for it. But it tells us, huh? Five seconds. No, because then we say possibly the person had a lapse, <laughs> had a lapse between the two and he has to, he, uh, it has to be warned again. Over and over again? Yeah. So, so the, the, the likelihood of someone actually getting capital punishment was very, very rare. It says that uh, Bezdin, that uh, executed someone in 70 years, once in 70 years, he was called um, a murderous Bezdin. So the likelihood of someone actually getting capital punishment was, was very, very rare. And But the Torah tells us how severe it is, that it is something that is a very, very serious transgression. Just like when it says an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, why does the Torah say it that way? In order the person should get the message, same thing is also keeping the Shabbos, is severing one's connection from to, to, to Hashem. 
So when we speak about the, the that which the Torah tells us, the consequences, it is not meant to be a punishment. It is meant to be an atonement. So this is the view. It's not that God is a God of vengeance and he's going to get back at the person. He's going to punish the person. God is not a, a God of punishment. He's a God of atonement. There are different ways how different things are atoned to make that make that a correction of what was what 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 what, what, what the blemish that was done to the person's soul. So this is so it's an atonement and a, 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 and and um, a purification for the for the for the person. Now we have. Um, The next, on page, uh, next page, I really, I guess it, I should. Next page, it, it is uh, one, one, one. The, third, the third page is where we get our information about the 39 categories of work. It says by Yakhel. In the, this is where we get number 39. Moshe assembled the entire Israelite community and says to them, these are the words of Hashem, that Hashem has commanded for you to do. You may do work during the six weekdays, but Saturday must be kept holy as a Shabbos of Shabbos to Hashem. Whoever does any work on that day should be put to death. Here we have, do not ignite any fire on Shabbos, no matter where you may live. And immediately following that, is the materials for the tabernacle that Hashem has now given the commandment that they should now prepare a Mishkan. What is the introduction before they, they are told about the, the Mishkan? What is the introduction? Shabbos. Which means, why would they introduce with Shabbos? How does Shabbos have an introduction to the building of the Mishkan? And this is, again, orally, Teresh Shabbat tells us that the Mishkan could not be built on Shabbos. Shabbos has a priority over the building of the Mishkan. Even though you're making a house for Hashem, it cannot be done on Shabbos. So therefore, whatever was a major part of construction of the Mishkan, that cannot be done on Shabbos. And there were 39 major details for the construction of the Mishkan. So there was sewing in the Mishkan, there was building in the Mishkan, and there was writing in the Mishkan. All of these activities were a part of the building of the Mishkan. And therefore, this is where in the Torah it indicates, it alludes to the 39 categories of work. It was Moshe Rabbeinu who told us what they are in detail, but where do we see the indication in the Torah where before they were told about building of the Mishkan, they were told about keeping the child. <laughs> so whatever is a part of the building of the Mishkan, that is part of the Malachas, and there are 39 categories in that. Now, the, the Torah specifically tells us about not to make a fire. <coughs> How was a fire made in the times of Moshe Rabbeinu? How do they make a fire? Stones. Hmm? They rub stones. Okay. <laughs> what else? How else did they make a fire in the times of Moshe Rabbeinu? Like twisting. Friction. Okay. They had a rope. <laughs> Okay, um, if anyone could tell me what about, about a tinderbox, you'll tell me next uh, next time. What? what is a tinderbox? A tinderbox. What's a tinderbox? That's what they use to light fires with a tinderbox. You'll tell me what a tinderbox is, and we'll be able to continue from there. A tinderbox. 